Fortuna. The next card is Leo meeting Sagittarius, the Sun meeting Jupiter. And you already see that this meeting, this merging of these two energies is a much more favorable one than the last one was. Leo is ruled by the Sun and Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter and they are much more in agreement with each other than Pluto and the Sun was. The energies of these two are much more harmonious and so the resulting card is also a very nice and positive card. The person is standing with their hands raised to the sky, symbolizing their connection with the divine but also a kind of surrender to the greater forces that are at play in the universe. And it's exactly this faithful surrender that will be the key to his fortune. It's as if this person is saying that there is a higher power that governs my life and I am willing to accept whatever the universe has in store for me. It's as if he is accepting faithfully whatever the divine energies will bring him. And yes, the card is called Fortuna, that is fortune. Fortuna in Roman mythology was the goddess of luck, fate and fortune. She was in fact often depicted with a cornucopia symbolizing the abundance of blessings that she might bring to you. But in fact, Fortuna had the power to bring both good luck and bad luck, making her quite a complex figure in Roman mythology. So you never quite knew what you might get from her. And so similarly, when this card comes up in a reading, it can represent good or bad luck, depending on our perspective. And you know the story of the farmer and his horse, or the old man and his horse, it's a classic Taoist tale that illustrates this idea that events we perceive as good or bad luck may ultimately be neither, as life is always full of unexpected twists and turns. 